Tonight, science does something useful for once. Giant radioactive lizards destroying Japan. When do I get my giant turkey? Then, books that are destroying America. We'll talk to Ray Bradbury. I burned his book. Now we'll see what it's really about. And later, we'll interview Robert Heinlein, who has beaten me for yet another Hugo Award. But I've got a good feeling about next year. This is the Colbert Report. America, I have some bad news. The Russians beat us into space. Now, now, America, it's not all bad news. Just this past Thursday, the newly created NASA launched their own satellite to show those commie Russians how it's done. And I haven't been this excited about science since we declared peace on Japan. Now, it's no secret that I'm no fan of science. But recently, doctors were able to perform the first successful open-heart surgery and the first use of a mechanical heart. And you know what that means. It's only a matter of time before we're all cyborgs. And it's unfortunate, too, because Albert Einstein might have used these advances in medical technology. But unfortunately, he died, refusing surgery. So that's just how smart he was. Also this decade, the Xerox machine was invented, giving Americans a great new way to take pictures of their own rear ends. That's the latest, and we'll be right back. Tonight, we have Ray Bradbury with us, author of Fahrenheit 451. Great to have you on the show. Great to be here, Stephen. Now, your novel was the winner of the Hugo Award in 1953. I haven't read it yet, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? Well, you should read it, Stephen. I'm told it's a classic. The novel presents a future American society in which the masses are hedonistic, and critical thought through reading is outlawed. <laughs> Sounds like a communist wet dream to me. <laughs> so, why don't you tell us why it's called Fahrenheit 451? Well, paper combusts at 451 degrees Celsius, but I thought that Fahrenheit sounded like a more interesting title. So, if I understand you correctly, you're promoting misinformation, lying to your readers? No more than you do every night, Stephen. <laughs> well, why don't you tell me a little bit more about the plot? Well, the central character, Guy Montag, is employed as a fireman. In this future, it means book burner. The firemen burn them for the good of humanity. Sounds like my favorite hobby. <laughs> Aren't you an author? Why would you want to burn books? I am all for burning books that aren't mine. Less competition that way. Maybe we should burn television sets then. Well, you see, that's interesting. Because, see, today, you're on television. Well, I'm just here to try to educate the public about my book and to promote reading. So, you promote reading by having a protagonist who burns books? Well, actually, he goes through life-changing experiences which show him how meaningless his life is. Over time, he slowly begins to appreciate the beauty in literature. Life-changing experiences, like a Playboy magazine? <laughs> Not quite, Stephen. He's ordered to burn a woman's house, and the woman decides to be burned alive with her books. Ouch. He's forced to give up his life as he knows it, he burns his boss alive, and he's chased by a mechanical dog. Wow, that all sounds pretty exciting. I guess I should have read it. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Stephen. The book is Fahrenheit 451. The author, Ray Bradbury. And we'll be right back. Oh, 
อคังแหงแต่หลอกシバクの件で起きながら。なおかつの目を持って動いたのそして根拠からしてゴジラも同等量の鳥田さんあなただけですもしも一旦このオキシジェンデストロイヤーを使ったらって世界の宇宙者たちが黙って見ているはずがないんです原爆3原爆2原爆3原爆Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm no scholar, but I know propaganda when I see it. Which brings me to tonight's word. Books I read. The first book on my list is iRobot. Isaac Asimov's series of books on robots is just another attempt to communize the nation. Now nation, I know you're all worried about the communist threat. Ten years ago, iRobot came out and warned us about robots taking over the nation. But robots are just trying to promote communist propaganda. Robots are going to start killing people, and they will stop listening to us, and they will take control. So next time you turn on Comrade Robbie, his beady little red eyes will look at you, and they will disobey. What we need is more robot psycho psychologists like Susan Calvin. Who will keep robots in check before they can corrupt the nation. After burning the iRobot series, my next book is The Demolished Man by Alfred Bester. First, the communists wanted us to share money, and now they're going to make us share our minds through telepathy. This is just one more example of communistic propaganda in the form of poor literature, and this book is just a load of trash. The next book in my series is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. They were trying to govern themselves, but I'll tell you this, communism just doesn't work. If you're not familiar with the book, here's a video clip from Lord of the Flies. And that just goes to show you, if you stand up, you will get crushed by a giant foam rock. And that's why I burnt another red book. And that's the word. We'll be right back. Dave! Doc Hallen's been killed. Doc Hallen? What happened? It's over at his place. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. But what was it? What happened with it, kid? Well, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Teenagers see it first, like a falling star from outer space. Boy, that was close. Hey, come on, I want to see if I can find it. An old man finds it, touches it, and this is the shocking result. From then on, there's no stopping the blob as it spreads from town to town. It's indestructible. It's indescribable. Nothing can stop it. This town is in danger. 
How can it be stopped? Mob hysteria sweeps one city. Before long, the nation, and then the world could fall before the blood-curdling threat of the Bob. Starring Steve McQueen and a cast of exciting young people.